Well, fortunate enough today to be able to talk to the fastest man in the world, Ernie Tuft. Ernie, thanks for uh, taking some time to talk to me today. Uh, you're welcome. Now, tell us a little bit about the uh, the fastest man title. Can you explain to our viewers uh, just how you came up came about getting that? I suppose uh, when we was in Daytona Beach, Florida, when we uh, qualified five miles faster than Nick's closest car, and then they call it the fastest in the world. And, and how fast was that exactly? Um, it was 170.470. It was in 1964. And that was incredibly fast uh, for those days. Yeah, the next close was Junior Johnson with the mystery Chevy engine. They bragged about the $2 billion mystery engine. They got within five miles an hour of us. And from there, you, you kind of became a legend. Well, that's up to what the person thinks. <laughs> What was NASCAR like in those early days? You mentioned Junior Johnson and you know Richard Petty was uh, catting around in those days. There were a, a, a lot of great racers. Yeah, well, we were in a modified class, but that's the only class where you could get in and get the parts so you could go faster than a new factory car. And uh, how many uh, Daytonas did you run in? I entered in five. The first one, I had a Studebaker body and a Ford chassis and an Edsel with six carburetors. And I turned it over to Leroy Arvis buddy, and he rolled it seven times in the time trials. And then in 64, I got Fireball Roberts, best driver in the world, and he set the record then. Some of that, that was uh, pretty groundbreaking as far as uh, some of the things that you did to make those cars go faster. Well, one thing go by, uh, I asked uh, Lee Petty if he had a Chrysler engine for sale. And I says, he said, yes, why don't you do that? I'm going to put in a half inch longer stroke and show you what power is. He says, you'll never stroke Chrysler ha a Plymouth Hemi, I'll bet you 100 to 1. He says, well, I did. And, and then that got to be uh, the first car in the world average over 180 miles an hour. That's in 67. Did he ever pay up? No. He just <laughs> chuckled and walked away. And what was it like to race the Daytona 500 when that track was new? Oh, it was nice and smooth then. When I had the Studebaker, I had six carburetors on it, and I had to take it out myself at 135 to get the carburetor and the jets all set, and then I turned over to Leroy's buddy, and that's when he rolled it. Did it bring a tear to your eye to see that? I suppose you're just, he came out of it all right? Yeah, he said I didn't want to roll in any other car. I had mine braced up really good in the bars, and he didn't get hurt. It was kind of, get a lump in your throat when something like that happens? It's sort of in a way, but then in the next year, then I got a better one, that's when we set the record. All right, very good. Well, uh, thank you for uh, taking some time to reminisce a little bit for us. Well, you're welcome. It's always kind of fun to talk about racing. <laughs>